I'm San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I am a Trinity University alum, and I want you to know about my passion for these two vibrant communities. My alma mater is now a nationally recognized liberal arts university, offering fully integrated arts, humanities, STEM, and professional programs. Grounded in the liberal arts, Trinity graduates students who think critically, act meaningfully, and contribute confidently throughout their careers. As for San Antonio, Trinity is an oasis in the heart of a city that serves as a cultural bridge to the Americas. We are a diverse community that values inclusion and welcomes intellectual curiosity and spirited debate. We're a city that challenges convention and welcomes new ideas. Great things are happening at Trinity University in San Antonio and through all our connections to our multicultural world. Join me in being part of this exciting moment. Bulldogs versus Tigers, round two. A heart stopper finish to the women's basketball game. Saw Trinity win by two. And we are lucky to get yet another dose of basketball, SCAC style, as Braxton Berry at center court, ready to go up against his fellow Bulldog center, Easton Allen. And it goes to the Tigers, and AJ Clark kicks off this senior weekend with a bang. Two quick ones for the Tigers. That was a very quick score here. Trinity trying to get on the board early here, get some early points, and try and hopefully stay on the gas throughout this game. Isaac Orozco here with the ball over to Ladarius King, and now Xavier Phillips back to King. TLU trying to go inside, back out for the deep three, and it's good for Xavier Phillips. A good sign for Texas Lutheran, the junior from Austin. Tanner Brown back to Clark, who got two on the first possession, gets it to Barry, who hangs on to it, tiptoes the line, and keeps possession for Trinity before a steal, thanks to JT Watson, gets it right back to TLU. Quick minute of play already passed us here in Calgar Gym. Once again, I'm Brian Yanselson, joined by Reed Rosales and Caleb Reed. See Ben Hanley take it away for a moment, then loses it off his foot, so it'll stay with the black and gold of Seguin.
These are two teams heading in opposite directions. Trinity winners of their last two. Meanwhile, Texas Lutheran, six in a row that they have lost. They stand at 10 and 13 overall, five and nine in conference play. Xavier Phillips driving and traveling. As he shuffled his feet just a bit much there. Trinity 17 and six this year, 10 and four in SCAC play. And we will take you through the important scenarios that are at stake with this game as we move along. Right now it is Harvey who bounces it down to Clark, loses it and now gathers it back. Brown takes his lane and fights for it to get it home. Dealing with the contact. Two buckets in the paint for Trinity as they go into a full court press. Orozco has it to Watson and the Bulldogs safely across. Orozco thought about the top of the key jumper. Dealing with good defense from Harvey. Now Phillips has it to Watson, part of the zone. Had his back turned to the basket the whole time. It'll be Orozco way too much on the floater. A collision ends up with the ball in the hands of Hanley. Charges all the way past, finds a charging Harvey, but that was a little too much there in the air. Nearly rejected by Barry, instead kept alive for the moment before TLU gives it up. But already we are seeing what we should get used to fast, fast, fast between these two teams. Exactly, and there's a great energy here, a great crowd. A great visiting crowd from Seguin, just up by 10. You could hear it even on the introduction, so many local players on this roster and their friends and family in the stands ready to cheer on their Bulldogs. Nice finish there by number 11 and you can hear it a little bit, the cheers after that one. Ladarius King, the freshman from Austin, Texas, puts TLU up five to four. Too much contact there defensively from Xavier Phillips looking over at his bench saying, what did I do wrong? Official says that's his first personal foul. You guys mentioned all the local players. That's one really great thing about D3 sports in general is that you get a whole lot more local talent. And so, you know, you're seeing players, of course, along the I-10 area, but also up and down the I-35 corridor as well. Uh, um, as we got some players from New Braunfels, Austin, just kind of all over. And just down I-10 is Jacob Harvey from the Houston area, knocks down his last three. Back and forth action in the first three and a half. Orozco makes Clark jump in the air. Now Watson, the mid-range look, too strong for him. Harvey collects the board and the Tigers going quickly the other way. Harvey, top of the key, walks into it. Off the rim, but the board gets to Brown. Harvey will try it again. Too strong once more for Jacob Harvey. So out of three, he has shot. One has gone down. Phillips will give it a shot, and that one is good. Clark and Brown not wasting any time getting the ball cross court. Hanley to the hole, strong, but a little wild there, and Clark there to clean it up and draws the foul. So four minutes gone by in San Antonio. TLU eight, Trinity seven. And we reach our first media timeout to continue to set up this game a little bit. So much at stake tonight, Reed. Yeah, really so much at stake. Trinity needs a win to really almost be in a very good position to get the bye that is so coveted in the SCAC Conference Tournament. And TLU, well, they're always looking to knock off the Trinity Tigers, but they're also on the bubble. They need a win here, and then they need a win tomorrow, and they'll be in a very good position to make the conference tournament as well and be back in San Antonio the next weekend. Yeah, they're in a very precarious position, and you see it on your screen right there, a three-way tie in fifth and sixth place. Shriner, TLU, and Southwestern all at five and nine. And it just so happens that all three of those teams, and then you include Trinity, in action against one another. So we are truly at the heart of SCAC basketball right now on Tiger Network. TLU facing Trinity, Shriner facing Southwestern tonight. And then those teams will switch. TLU will take a trip out to the Hill Country to face Shriner. Southwestern will make its way into the Alamo City. 
and it's hard to get into all the exact scenarios. Even Austin College there at 4-11 and 11 has an opportunity to knock their way into the tournament. But the most important thing to know is these teams just want to win because they can control it in their hands if they do so. Exactly. And I mean, that's what end of season tournaments are really all about. You know, it's just you play or, or you play, what is it now, 23 games, going to be 24 tonight, 25 after tomorrow. And it all comes down to, you know, one. And that's really the beauty of sports and the beauty of end of season tournaments like this. Back from the timeout, a glorious look at the mustache of AJ Clark. He knocks down both free throws. And you might be wondering why point out the mustache? Well, it's a special Friday in Calgar Gym, Stashy Friday. That's right, the final regular season Friday of every season for the last 15 years has been Stashy Friday for Trinity Men's Basketball. That means these Tigers try to grow out their best mustache and we will need your help, I think, in the chat, telling us who's you like best. So please comment with us as the game goes along. As the Bulldogs losing control of the ball here, the fighting mustaches go to the court, force a jump ball, but it'll stay with TLU. Nice little tradition we get to be a part of in San Antonio. If yeah. I had known about that, then I wouldn't have shaved earlier today. Fornerette looking for a teammate, a tight pass there, but King does grab it, has to put it up. Prayer won't be answered, but not to worry, an offensive board, merely a putback for Easton Allen. Instead, he'll leave frustrated with the foul called on him. Team foul number two. No fouls against Trinity thus far. So a very physical game on the women's side. And we expect pretty similar for these two teams as Tanner Brown spots up from deep, it rattles out. Rebound goes to Texas Lutheran, Mason Wallace. Right back to DJR Duan. Now the three-pointer off, but another offensive board. It was Ladarius King who misfired from downtown. Bulldogs trying to rotate this Trinity zone. Little pop up from mid range, bounces out. Board goes to AJ Clark. And this is a Trinity team that is the highest scoring team per game in the SCAC. They can put up a lot of points very fast. They put up 98 against Austin last weekend. Right now, slowing down the Trinity defense, though, with that offensive foul called Hanley trying to go to the basket with power. It'll lead him to the bench with the foul called as Coach Jimmy Smith makes his first set of changes. Griffin Levine, Caleb Jenkins, and Jacob Milhouse, along with Ty Williams. So four of five new names on the court for Trinity. Fornerette gives it a glance, now backs it out to Wallace. Bulldogs trying to hit the heart of the zone. Another mid-range pull-up. Still not going to fall for Ardwan. But as they've done on the last several possessions and second opportunity coming up for the black and gold. Looked like a shuffling of the feet there. And that one certainly could have been a travel. Jimmy Smith wanted it. Still no call though. Shot clock down to five. Fornerette dealing with Levine. Won't put it down. Stingy defense by Trinity there. Drop off to Milhouse will lead to a foul. Cesar Reyes getting the, the foul against him. Both teams have been in a scoring drought for the last couple of minutes here, so Trinity hoping to, to break that dry spell here. Opportunity at two. We have our second good look at a mustache. This one of Jacob Milhouse, who hits his first free throw. Jacob Milhouse has to be very excited to see the black and gold of TLU. Last time they played in Seguin, a career high 16 points for the sophomore. That one's short for Milhouse, so a split trip to the line. Trinity gets right into a full court press. Bulldogs break it. 
Fornerat trying to make something happen. He's also very happy to see Trinity. Had 17 points as the Tigers won in Seguin about a month ago. Fornerat from distance, too strong. Board cleared by Jacob Milhouse. Now the outlet to Levine, drop off to Clark. Jenkins, top of the key, three, count it. That three puts Trinity up by five with 13 minutes to go and ferocious defensive effort. Jenkins dives on the floor for the steal. Levine leading the offense through Williams. Now Jenkins inside off the glass and down for two more. Caleb Jenkins with a spark off the bench. Trinity just like that up seven. Trinity extends their run now eight and zero oh over the last three minutes as that's gonna be out of bounds going Trinity's way. So a chance to extend this run here. It's now gone on for three minutes and 20 seconds. This is exactly what Coach Austin Falke from TLU told me in our conversation this week that has been responsible for their six game losing streak. It hasn't been bad games, it's been bad runs that have really put them out of games. And right now this 8-0 run Threatening to put Trinity up double digits. A follow through from Williams, not good, but he draws contact. And will head to the line himself. So Trinity doing also what they tend to do, heading to the free throw line with great consistency. Levine there, lucky not to trip and fall. You saw him kind of slip there at the very top before that drive. That free throw is good for Ty Williams, a sophomore from Pearland, Texas. Got to say his mustache on point along with the man bun. That is just a great, great look all around for the sophomore who didn't even play, wasn't even on the team a year ago as a freshman. Yet here he is getting big minutes in conference play. A testament to his effort. And Coach Jimmy Smith saying he will continue to play as Trinity looks to go big in certain matchups. Knocks down both free throws, and now the Trinity press leads to an easy two for Jacob Milhouse. And these Tigers are all over Texas Luther in 19 to eight in favor of Trinity, another steal. Williams grabs hold of it. It'll be Roberts down low out to Milhouse. He's feeling good, drives hard, and just too much sauce on that pass. Gets away from Williams. It'll take us to a media timeout. Trinity 19, TLU eight. And this is exactly how Jimmy Smith wants to start the game as he looks on from the sideline reads. Yeah, and you're talking about big runs. Trinity on a 12-0 run right now. They have been very impressive offensively and they are playing for that bye in the conference tournament. It is so, so important. Not a lot of teams win when they don't have a bye. Winning three games in three days is very difficult and Trinity they want to be in the stands watching those first round games. You hit on two of the exact keys, Reed, right there. One, three games in three days. Anybody who has played basketball knows that is a tough, tough task. Just on your body, the physical toll. And then the mental side of it, getting to sit in the stands and scout your opponent that you're going to face the very next day is a huge advantage for the Trinity Tigers that they're trying to grab. And seeing as though that game will happen in San Antonio, they're looking to really capitalize on everything going their way next weekend. Of course, and I mean, you, you also mentioned here in San Antonio, you know, that's going to reduce stress whenever it comes to travel as well. You know, you don't have to worry about taking a long bus ride or a long plane ride. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting adjusted to a new hotel room. You are in your dorm. You are in your environment. It's going to make it that much better both on the body and on the brain whenever it comes down to the tournament. Meanwhile, Texas Lutheran just hoping for a trip back down to San Antonio. They'll need to pull it together here to get back into this 11 point deficit already less than halfway through the first half. Orozco, top of the key. The leader of this offense gets it to Fornerette halfway through the shot clock and another pass nearly gets away, somehow kept alive before another possible travel that isn't called. But either way, Trinity gets a hand of the ball. Levine shuffles past Orozco. Kicks it to Jenkins. Roberts has room underneath, but he can't grab control of the ball. 
and it'll belong to Texas Lutheran. Trinity's gone three for three uh, from their last three shots, so we'll see once they are able to put the ball back up whether or not that streak is going to be able to continue. Still in a 12-0 run. Jenkins a high jump defending the inbounds. Bulldogs do get it in. Struggling to get it across, so five seconds left to get it. They do. Arduan has it. And now Orozco will be able to engineer things for the Bulldogs. But Levine right on top of him there. Now Jenkins the switch. Out of control drive ends up with Fornerette. And a carry going to be called on the sophomore from Surprise Arizona. Looks pretty surprised at that call. It'll go to the Trinity Tigers. You can see Orozco not thrilled with the call. Orozco trying to fight right back, nearly steals it. It'll stay with the maroon and white. That lead still 11 for Trinity early on. And as both teams have shown, no game is ever over until it's over. So plenty of basketball still to play. Levine out to Jenkins, fakes the three, now dribbling in the lane. Lots of contact there, gets his own miss and puts it back up for two. Looking like a Caleb Jenkins special tonight. As that Trinity defense right back at it, never resting for a moment, nearly tiptoes out of bounds. Levine looks at the foreigner at miss off the glass. Williams dives and is fouled as he fights for the rebound. Physical play. Yeah, and the drought continues for the Bulldogs. Nearly six minutes now. They need to find a way to quench the drought or else the Tigers, as they are right now, are going to run away with it. What you are seeing is a TLU offense that ranks dead last in the SEAC in scoring. Millhouse trying to make it more, and he sure does. A top of the key triple from the sophomore, and it is all Trinity early. Williams there defensively. Too late, though, as he'll be called for the foul. The and one coming up for Easton Allen. Try to break this dry spell, a 17-0 run before that layup from Allen. That also broke a scoring drought of almost seven minutes. So TLU finally gets some points on the board, but with the score 24-10, they've let the Tigers get out to a fairly substantial lead early here in this first half. Allen, the big forward at 6-6, can't rattle home that free throw. So the lead at 14 for Trinity. Levine spots up from three. Contact will lead him to the line. And he looks happy to be there. Griffin Levine, one of a few seniors being honored this weekend. Has got some bright red orange shoes to go along with that mustache. Ladarius King, the freshman, called there on that foul. First one off the hands of Levine is good. This is the senior from Dallas who has not spent his entire career with the Tigers. In fact, a prolific, pr prolific scorer with Pratt Institute in New York. Averaged nearly 20 a game. And both of them have been good for Levine thus far. And we've got a third on the way. As he has told me, it was an adjustment for sure to get used to not being relied on for the scoring. But he has found ways to help in many ways beyond putting it down the bucket. That's exactly why he sees so much playing time and he is able to take advantage of that foul. Put Trinity up 17 once again. Big call out for the ball. You can see why Xavier Phillips feeling it early. By far the leading scorer for Texas Lutheran. Williams loses the dribble, says no problem. I will shoot from right here. Something we have not seen from Ty Williams that mid-range game. That would be a great addition to his arsenal. It's 
Phillips trying to do it all. Long rebound goes to TLU. Orozco right back at it. Off the right of the rim. It'll go to Trinity, despite the nice effort from Jordan Dunn to keep it alive. Jenkins takes his time, dribbling it up the court for Trinity. Joined by Abdullah Roberts, Ty Williams, Ben Hanley, and Caleb Jenkins, it is Hanley with the ball here. Williams, a circling Brown rejected by Dunn. Here comes Phillips. King fakes the pass, now takes it himself. Brown stayed right with him there, not fooled at all. And now he gets in front of a pass, takes it with him. Active hands for Trinity. That's the seventh uh, turnover that Trinity has managed to grab so far today. They'll give it right back, however. A legal screen going to be called against number 25, Ty Williams. And with 7.51 to go, that'll mean another media timeout. Trinity 29, TLU 13. It has been all maroon and white so far in San Antonio. Yeah, and maybe the power of the mustache coming in. 22 and five run, six for their last eight scored. And they're keeping this TLU offense very quiet. And it's hard for a Bulldog to make their way through a jungle and Trandy just running away with it early on. It's not something we're used to seeing when these two teams face off with one another. In fact, we're so accustomed to tight, tight games. If you're a fan at home that has kept track of TLU and Trinity on the men's basketball side, you'll remember the likes of an Abdullah Roberts buzzer beater in Seguin, a Tanner Brown layup with four seconds to go last year again in Seguin to win that game. And then Texas Lutheran a year ago coming into San Antonio and defeating Trinity on the floor of Calgar Gym 69 to 67. When these two teams meet up, something dramatic tends to happen. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, we mentioned it during the women's game, but again, it's the same thing of local rivalries, longtime rivals. Again, Seguin is only just, you know, 30, 45 minutes away. So these two teams, they've got a long history with each other. They don't like each other, obviously. And so they always cook up a fantastic game, no matter what time of year it is, no matter whether it's conference play or just regular season. Anytime that these two teams get together, you are always in for some fireworks. And the ones that benefit the most, us that get to watch the games. And we are lucky to bring it to you here on Tiger Network. Out of that timeout, TLU turning it over one more time. That makes it eight turnovers for the black and gold. Something they have struggled with all year long. Braxton Berry trying to gain position, battling with Easton Allen. The ball in the hands of Jenkins. Now it is Hanley, one-on-one, -on -one, takes Phillips to town. Barry gets the drop off. And who will it be off of? It'll be a foul called on Trinity, it looks like. No, that'll be a foul on number two, Easton Allen. So instead of it going off of Trinity, it'll be two free throws for number zero, Braxton Berry. Braxton Berry, someone who is also very happy to see the Bulldogs in town, misses that first free throw. And since it was a foul away from the shot, just a one and one can't earn the second. Orozco across the timeline to Dunn. And the Bulldogs trying to cut into this 16-point deficit. It'll be Phillips again. The tip out by Allen keeps it with Texas Luther, and it has been Phillips as the go-to. Not much other offense, although they'll get some free throws here. A blocking foul called on Barry. Number zero, Braxton Barry, is first. Team foul number four at the line. For two is Ladarius King. 
both teams kind of going through a bit of a drought at the moment here. Trinity's drought 2-14 and TOU's remain at 2-26. Lots of changes for both teams as Ladarius King, the freshman, misses his first free throw trying to hit the second one. And he does, someone who played in nine straight now after missing his first 12. So TLU happy to have the freshman in there. Hanley, lots of room to work with, dribbles around the defender and banks it home. When Hanley is at his best, he is doing just that, slashing and dashing. Ball off the foot of King. Has to get it across, does, barely in time. And then a foul going to be called as Mason Wallace had it in possession. Ben Hanley got called for that foul. That's going to be, looks like his second. Inbound goes to Fornerette. Doubled at the timeline, able to get it to King though, and now right back in the hands of the guard. The big man done, looking for help. Looks at number three, Wallace. Clock running out, Watson has to put it up, not gonna do it in time. Turnover forced by the Trinity defense, TLU not quite aware of how much time was left. After a frantic pace to start this game, both teams slowing it down just a tad. Clark backing up for Norette. Tries to get it to Barry, but for the second time, we've seen him lose control of it. A tough spot to catch a pass there for anybody. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's hard enough to be able to catch a pass. I know that I was never really good at catching passes, but you know, whenever you got pressure like that, it's pretty easy to have a bad throw, have a bad catch, anything that can really lead to eventually missing the ball. Short on the three-point shot there was Fornerette. Ball is loose. Who will grab it? TLU will have it off the leg of the Tigers, says referee on the sideline. Great look at Jimmy Smith there. Fornerette looking to get anything going for his Bulldog, still down 17 with just under five and a half to go in the first half. Harvey has his hands up on Fornerette, now in the hands of Wallace. Shot clock down to five. Phillips will have to go up with it soon. Does he see it? No, he doesn't. And before the 30 second violation, a travel going to be called. And we are currently seeing a Trinity defense ramping up the pressure at every facet of their game. Yeah, they really have the TLU offense in kind of a stranglehold. TLU offense is having a lot of difficulty breaking through a zone defense that Trinity has annoyed the SCAC with. And I mean, even whenever they do break through, they're only shooting for 24%. So I mean, you know, whenever TOU can break through, they aren't able to capitalize on those opportunities. Capitalizing is very nearly on the putback. Just rolled off the rim. First foul going against Dunn. And the foul was called even before Barry put it up. Because it'll send Pierce Matthews to the line. Matthews. The sophomore from Cypress, Texas, coming off a career-high seven points against Austin College. First free throw is true. It'll allow A.J. Clark to head to the bench in favor of Zach Fenn. Along with those career-high seven points, Matthews has scored in three straight. So he has really come alive for Jimmy Smith off the bench. Can't bring home that second free throw though, so the lead 18 for Trinity with 4.40 to go. Matthews nearly had it, instead Zach Fenn does and got a little excited with the ball, will travel. The 
It's an excellent attempt at a play. Ball nearly sails into the student section. King able to hold on to it. Now Wallace. Thought he had a steal, did Zach Fenn. Instead, a foul. Going to be called on number 35, one of the more active defenders you will ever see. Yeah, Fenn, he's a chaos creator. He's the best pickpocket on this Tiger team. That was a very quick look on that one, but on that replay, it showed that he had all ball. Maybe later get a closer look at it. Now a kicked ball. ball we'll continue to keep it with Texas Lutheran. TLU 0 of their last four, two for their last 15. A scoring drought now two and a half minutes long. And one big element of that two minute and 30 uh, second scoring drought has been their turnovers. Three or three turnovers in the last 239. Rejection by Braxton Berry. Ball kept alive. It'll stay with Trinity, says the official, as Braxton Berry got up high. Let's take a look here. Thought he was beat initially, but not so fast. And Braxton Berry has told me in the past he likes scoring, he likes rebounding, but there is nothing he likes more than blocking a shot. And he did so right there to keep Trinity up 18 as we head to this final media timeout. Not as many updates as the last media timeout because these defenses have really stepped up and kept the offenses off the board. Definitely, yeah. I mean, 23% shooting for TLU. Again, as I said before, Trinity has not allowed very many opportunities, but when they have, TLU has not been able to capitalize, and that's really a big component of why they are down right now 14-32 with uh, a little bit under four minutes to go here before halftime. Yeah, and it's that pesky Trinity zone defense. Whenever I talk to coaches, they say, I love Coach Jimmy, but that dang zone defense, it is awful to go up against. And the Tigers are showing off the strength of their defensive play by holding this TLU team to only 14 points. And the numbers don't lie, Reed. They back up your point perfectly. 10 steals a game forced by this Trinity defense. That is not only the best number in the conference, that is the 20th best mark in the entire country. And so this Trinity defense, the zone, the active hands, and the constant pressure applied from start to finish go. results in more possession for Everybody the Tigers that then helps them be the leading scoring offense in the conference. So defense certainly leading to offense. And out of the timeout, Harvey looking for some help as he lost the dribble, finds Brown now right back to the sophomore. Finds some room in the lane, the turnaround jumper, nothing but the bottom for number 10. You mentioned those 10 steals. Trinity already has four of them here, and we still have some time left in the first half, so, so they may go over that mark. Way off on the three there is Arduan. Chance of air ball coming from the student section. And the shooting hasn't been pretty for the black and gold. Five for 23 as a team. That is good for just 22%. You mentioned they average just 40%. That is already last in the conference, but they are way below that. Brown changing directions. His mid-range is good. So Harvey and Brown taking advantage of some soft spots in the TLU defense. And it'll bring up a point that Coach Smith made as well here as Arduan trying to find room in the zone. Hands all over him, though. The free throw attempt is good, making it look easy there from the charity stripe. But as the Tigers battle back offensively, notice how much TLU fights to cut off the three as they will gain possession here. But I know Reed and I, you asked coach and it led to the answer of how TLU does everything they can to stop the three, but at the same time, it opens up a lot of holes that teams have been able to take advantage of, including these Trinity Tigers thus far. Yeah, and, and the advantage the Tigers have taken, they're up by 20. And it's been an impressive offensive display, and it's been very spread out. No Tiger has reached double-digit points yet.
Jenkins continues to pressure King here as the shot clock reaches 10. King kicks it out, Fornerette pumps, shoots, drills it from deep. It's gonna make TLU two for their last eight as that one rolls around. Fornerette looking to build momentum after the three spins, has it ripped away by Kevin Garcia. Garcia leading the charge in transition, finds Fenn. Attacks the paint, drops it off to Matthews who hits it but the official says offensive foul. Right idea for Zach Fenn, but better defense by TLU to force that offensive foul. That's gonna be Fenn's, looks like third foul here, so might wanna be a little bit more cautious here. Top of the key, triple, short. And they foul on the floor. It'll go against Pierce Matthews. And it'll send Jomari Francis to the line. First we've seen of Jomari, the freshman from Port Arthur, Texas. This is a rare sight for Bulldog fans. Jomari Francis has not played since December 31st against Howard Payne. But he'll get a free throw here, and he hits it, so he'll earn a second. Just his 11th appearance on the season for Texas Lutheran. But Coach Falke going to his bench for some help as the lead for Trinity will stay at 16 off that missed free throw. Garcia passed Francis and loses possession as he is fouled. So teams trading fouls now. That is 10 on TLU, nine against Trinity. Something we tend to see in these games. Yeah, especially when they're so chippy and so defensive like this. Fouls can start flying, the bonuses get put up quickly, and we see a lot of trips to the charity stripe. This trip being made by Garcia. Too strong, no, it bounces back home. Spoke too soon, Garcia with the smile as that one went home for him. The freshman from Laredo, Texas, who went to high school here in San Antonio, Wagner High School. You guys mentioned how chippy these two teams are. This is the second meeting, so, you know, combining how close these two teams are in proximity, there could also be some leftover grudges from the first time these two teams met down in Seguin. And Trinity winning five of the last six matchups between the Bulldogs and Tigers. So the pendulum certainly swinging the way of San Antonio in the Seguin San Antonio showdown. It's still lots of time here, 122 to go in the first half. Trinity has that 17 point lead. And Francis right back to the line. First one off the back iron. Texas Lutheran losing a heartbreaker to Colorado College just a few days ago. 67 to 64, they had a chance to tie it as the clock ran out. But Colorado College escaping the doghouse with a win and sending TLU to their sixth straight defeat. Trying anything to break that snide. Whenever you have a run of poor results like that, it can really be just demoralizing for a team, not just because of the whole the fact that you have lost now six in a row, but the fact that it's come at such a crucial time in the season. Jump ball will keep the ball with the Tigers wearing white. And you hit on a point, Caleb, that Coach Falke did make in our pregame conversation, saying it's been really key to go back to their motto. And we'll stay right here as the timeout is called. One minute to go, Trinity up by 16 saying the team has stayed positive thinking about the motto of their go-to poem. That's right, a go-to poem called State of Mind, which talks about growth. And he knows that a young team with a first year head coach is going to experience some ups and downs, going to have bumps along the way. But he is trying to corral his team into the stack tournament. And this is just his first year as head coach replacing a very successful Mike Wacker who had coached basketball for 37 years, including six here at Texas Lutheran. But no one knows this program better than Coach Falke. 
He spent eight years as an assistant here with Texas Lutheran, and he has spent some time elsewhere in the SCAC. He was an assistant at Shriner under Jimmy Smith, the head coach for the Trinity Tigers. They then together went to Texas Lutheran where they were assistant and head coach together. And now two head coaches facing off against one another in a pivotal game for both sides. Really cool connections as the SCAC family runs deep. AJ Clark spinning through the defense. One footed jumper, no good. Here comes Texas Luther in the opposite direction. Fornerette setting it up for King. And the, the zone flying into this Texas Lutheran offense has caused problems all night long. But Fornerette able to knife through and head to the line as more contact on the way. Two shots on the way for TLU as they are well into the double bonus. Too strong on that one for Fornerette. Just four points, three rebounds against Colorado College, but he can go off in a hurry. 12 double-digit scoring games. Gets that second free throw to go and leads to a Coach Falky timeout. So the lead, 37 to 22 with 26 and a half seconds to go. Both teams looking to head into the locker room with positive momentum. Of course, yeah. Uh, Trinity really doesn't have the momentum at the moment. Uh, haven't scored any field goals in the last 244. Hoping to turn that around here uh, within the next 26 and a half seconds. But even if they can't do that, they still have had an amazing first half. 37 points, got out to that big lead earlier. Just need to kind of recapture that magic and continue their momentum going into the second half. And a 15 point lead for Trinity. That's not insurmountable. TLU, if they put a good run together, they can definitely catch up to this Trinity offense if they go cold. And TLU, their defense is gonna have to step up and hold the Tigers down a little bit. It's what the Bulldogs did just a few days ago against those Colorado College Tigers. They were down by 12 at the half, and they cut it down all the way to three, so by no means is this game over. Tigers looking for a key last possession here to send them into the break, hope, feeling good. And Griffin Levine, the man at the point, letting that clock tick down. Got A.J. Clark. Caleb Jenkins, Grayson Her, and Kevin Garcia over there in the corner. Clark has it, gets it to Levine. Tries to get it to bounce home, won't. And it'll drain the clock to the buzzer. That full court heave won't fall for Texas Lutheran. And the offense stymied by the Texas Lutheran defense in these final three minutes. No field goals for Trinity, but they are still up 15 as we head to the break. So good action certainly on the way. We hope you stick with us on Tiger Network after this short halftime break.
I'm San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I am a Trinity University alum, and I want you to know about my passion for these two vibrant communities. My alma mater is now a nationally recognized liberal arts university, offering fully integrated arts, humanities, STEM, and professional programs. Grounded in the liberal arts, Trinity graduates students who think critically, act meaningfully, and contribute confidently throughout their careers. As for San Antonio, Trinity is an oasis in the heart of a city that serves as a cultural bridge to the Americas. We are a diverse community that values inclusion and welcomes intellectual curiosity and spirited debate. We're a city that challenges convention and welcomes new ideas. Great things are happening at Trinity University in San Antonio and through all our connections to our multicultural world. Join me in being part of this exciting moment.
Welcome back to Tiger Network, where the Trinity Tigers up 15 over their rivals down I-10. 37 to 22 the score. Coach Falky, Coach Smith making adjustments at the half. We'll see who draws it up better in these final 20 minutes. A pivotal, pivotal game for the Texas Lutheran Bulldogs and the Trinity Tigers. Nearly a walk there for Orozco. It was Trinity out to a hot start shooting wise. Both teams though have slowed down comparatively. That long rebound goes to Clark and an excellent bounce pass to Hanley cutting down the court. And the super senior connection working just like it did against Austin College. Xavier Phillips losing control of it a bit there. But A.J. Clark led the team with 19 points. Ben Hanley with 17 against the Kangaroos from Sherman. As Watson's mid-range well short. Here comes Hanley again. Talking to Coach Smith, acknowledging that when it matters most, those two super seniors will step up. And here is Hanley, a little strong on the three. Board goes to Phillips. And TLU will try to push it the opposite way. King forced to slow it down as the Tigers do get back defensively. Watson down low. Tough matchup on Barry. Standing very tall there and forcing it out. Watson. Late foul called as he went up. Barry was lurking, but he was no longer squarely on Watson there. And a pair of free throws coming up for the senior. It's going to be the third foul there for Barry so far today. And with not too much gone in this second period, we might start to see a little bit of issues with fouls here. That first free throw bounces out for Watson. From Fredericksburg, Texas, the Baden Billies of Fredericksburg High School. Second free throw does go home for the senior. And he'll be rewarded with a trip to the bench as DJ Ardwan checks in for him. TLU playing tighter defense on the ball here. You see Orozco all over Harvey has to get rid of it to Brown from deep. Too strong on that one. Orozco grabs the board. Phillips putting the moves on. Orozco himself a deep one. That one goes home. Three point bucket for the Helotus native O'Connor High School in the house. Plenty of fans in the stands. And the lead down to 13 for Trinity as their offense has gone cold before that beauty of a move that rolls home. Jacob Harvey has struggled to get room all night long, but on that one, he had an entire paint to work with. And now a break as the first time out of the half on the way. Trinity, despite their colder offense as of late, still comfortably up by 15. Yeah, and an interesting stat coming into the second half is 41 points scored, but it's been very spread out throughout the Tigers. No one has reached double digits, the highest scoring. Caleb Jenkins was seven. Yeah, and you have a great look at the Tiger bench there, being spoken to by head coach Jimmy Smith in his third season leading the Maroon and White. And it's been a year of ups and downs for the Trinity men's basketball team, primarily due to injuries to key players. You've had the likes of Tanner Brown, Caleb Jenkins, Ben Hanley, all miss significant amounts of time. But the positive side of that, never really a positive for the guys who are hurt, of course, and so glad to see them back. But the blessing for the guys who have come in to replace them is all of a sudden you have more experience, you have more time on the court, and you are seeing it now late in the season pay off because those guys that got time in valuable moments in key games earlier now can be a go-to for Coach Smith off the bench, even with the healthy guys back. Of course, and I mean, having big bench depth is absolutely crucial. Obviously, you want to have good players, but having good depth players is especially important because 
people can play a full 40 minute game, but it is incredibly difficult. And so you need people to come in for your starters, for those players who, you know, need rest and to be able to continue the production of a starter, even though you're coming off the bench, that is something that coaches absolutely love. Ladarius King doubled and gives up the ball. Tanner Brown, A.J. Clark teaming up for the Ferocious double team. And that'll be turnover number 13. Bench warning, TLU. TLU receiving a bench warning there. Coach Falky and his Bulldogs showing tremendous passion in a must-win situation tonight and tomorrow. Bulldogs playing with everything on the line. Clark stuck without a dribble, loses it. And here comes a two-on-one opportunity for TLU. Phillips to Orozco. But look at that Tiger defense. Get back quickly and force it out. Allen, Orozco from the wing. That's good for Isaac Orozco. Feeling it from the three-point line. That's two now in this half. And the lead down to 12. Braxton Berry taking it himself. Strong finish at the hole for Braxton Berry. He gets on the board after he scored a career-high 14 points at TLU, had a career-high 16 rebounds. Maybe waking up a little bit here in the second half. High pass to Phillips, Corral down, finds Ardwan patiently, and then rejected again by Braxton Berry. The call is Trinity basketball, but it looks like an official is coming to help. The one who made the call, and it will in fact change. TLU basketball. But you are seeing on full display Braxton Berry and his athleticism, how dangerous it can be. Forces an Aaron pass here, Harvey, Brown, Brown. Layup no good, Phillips grabs the board. Missed opportunity there for Trinity. Brown pokes it from behind then. And here's a three on to Clark. Euro step. Not going to fall, but a foul will send him to the line. It's going to be the second foul there on King. Two shots on the way for the super senior from San Antonio, Texas. The heart and soul of this Trinity Tigers team. First free throw good for Clark. And if you are wondering how important A.J. Clark is, just realize he was not present with the team in Colorado when Trinity fell to their fellow Tigers. Clark leading the team in points, rebounds, and assists. But the reason for his absence, a very honorable one. Clark in his fifth year here at Trinity obtaining a master's in healthcare administration. And as part of that program, they had a weekend long case study competition. And so he had to stay back home for that. Couldn't be with the team. And the team certainly felt his absence falling to Colorado College, but now fully back with the team. And showing up as he always does. Great defense by Ty Williams forces the missed shot by Arduan. Clark sends it the other way to Brown. And these Tigers back up 16, looking to push even more. Harvey, step back three. Too strong off the back iron. Easton Allen gets the board. Next stoppage will give us our first media timeout. Phillips trying to make sure it's after some TLU points, but he back down by Harvey for Norett. Taken away by Harvey. Harvey charging hard. And the foul going to be called on for Norette as yet another super senior will head to the charity stripe. Not sure if Hanley was really trying to get that steal there, but it was a very fortunate position for him. He ended up slipping there, trying to block the shot. And then as he was getting back into position, his arm ended up whacking the ball and he ended up getting the steal. So sometimes it's just about right place, right time. You hear a shout out for the Tiger cheerleaders on hand and an excellent look. Thank you to the great replay there. Clearly a lot of contact there caused by Fornerette as he tried to defend Hanley. 
Under 16 media timeout, and we'll use this time to shout out the woman you see on your screen in the maroon tiger shirt. That is Miss Evie Freiberg, Caleb Jenkins' mother. And on this senior weekend, felt like the right moment to shout out who everyone knows is the biggest cheerleader in the house. She is here for nearly every single game. And I had to ask Caleb about it, saying, do you hear your mom in the stand? She is so loud, we hear her here from the broadcast booth. And he told me a really funny story. He said, look, when I went to college and he started his career at Millsaps, he said, mom, they have cheerleaders at college. There's no need for you to cheer so loudly. And she said, Caleb, I understand what you're saying, but my parents never came to my athletic competitions. And so I want to be sure to be at all of yours and be as loud as possible. And so Caleb says, okay, that is fair. And Jimmy Smith can corroborate part of the story because he said when he first recruited Caleb Jenkins in Louisiana, he went to a game at the state championship and he said, okay, I like Caleb, but I like his mom more. She is worth 50 fans in the stands. And so Miss Evie Freiberg, Caleb Jenkins' mother, so great to have you in the house, always making a ton of noise in favor of her son and her Tigers. Of course, and I mean, it's just a great story because parents will always support their kids, but it feels like she just goes above and beyond every single game, no matter if it's here, sometimes on the road. Like, a good fan is important, but a good parent who is also a great fan almost impossible to beat. And even here after our shout out, if you keep a close eye on the top of your screen, she's right along center court, and she is always chanting defense, clapping, making noise, and making noise as that shot rattles out for TLU. Hanley kicks it to Tanner Brown. Brown's three, nothing but the bottom. The lead up to 20 for Trinity. Poked from behind by Clark. Williams gets the steal. Have to get it across here, do the Tigers, and they do. Hanley grabs the wild pass and finishes underneath. It is all pointing maroon and white tonight. 22 the lead now for Trinity as things unravel for Texas Lutheran. That equals their largest lead that they had earlier on in the game. Yeah, it's now gonna shrink, but Still 22 points have been the largest lead so far by Trinity today. One point has been the largest lead by TLU so far. Hard drive by Fornerette, a little too hard, says the official offensive foul. We'll give the ball right back to Trinity as not much is going right for Texas Lutheran on the offensive side. That's now five turnovers in the last three minutes. Ty Williams fighting to be in position, and now we have Caleb Jenkins back in the game along with Jacob Milhouse. And one other addition to that story, Caleb Jenkins saying, now he treats his mom as his little walk-up song, saying every time she screams, that's my boy, he knows he's in the right place. So we'll see if Jenkins can continue. It's been an already great game for him. Here it'll be Milhouse spinning underneath. Lots of contact, won't rattle in, and it'll go to TLU. It continues to be the story that you talked about, Reed. No Tigers in double digits, they're just sharing the wealth. Yeah, and they're taking advantage of a TLU offense. It's having some turnover issues. Five turnovers in the last three minutes. Clark Neely with the steal. Instead, an open three for number three, and that is three. Mason Wallace, the freshman from San Antonio, Judson High School graduate. Brings TLU just a little bit closer. 17 now the deficit. Still 12.58 to go in San Antonio. You see, in between the top of the key and the wing, the perfect spot for Wallace. Roscoe now in the backcourt. Takes a step backwards, always dangerous, but he does get it to Phillips. That's gonna be a travel, everyone saw it. You could hear the sneaker squeak.
Jenkins fakes as if he's gonna go fast. Now sets the offense up slowly. Directing traffic, Clark, the cut. Can he finish? Yes, he can. A.J. Clark up to eight points now as the race to double digits ensues. Who will get to double digits first, if anyone, for Trinity? So far, Clark has the lead in that race. It's Trinity's highest scorer at eight. Ball tipped away. Thought it might be off Brown, but it will go to Trinity. And now Levine will substitute Brown. Roberts also will check in for A.J. Clark. Big round of applause for those two. Get another look at Caleb Jenkins' mom. Making lots of noise as usual as her son has the ball here. Looking for help, finds Milhouse turning the screen. Finds a rolling Williams, big time contact there. Scary collision will lead to two Ty Williams free throws. But good to see a smile on the face just below the mustache of Ty Williams. You see here the pick and roll action. And Phillips, Wallace, combining for a whole lot of contact to take us to the under 12 media timeout. 11.59 to go, Trinity 53, Texas Lutheran 34. What has stood out to you so far about this second half, Reed? Well, what stood out so far is that Trinity has extended their lead and they've held it very consistently. TLU, it's not like they're not scoring, but Trinity, they're able to respond to every TLU shot. Exactly. Er, TLU has improved their field goal percentage that we were talking about last quarter, or sorry, last period. However, Trinity has been responding. It's been a whole thing of, okay, you did this, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And so far, Trinity has been playing it out to absolute perfection. TLU currently without one of their leading scorers, Mason Green, the senior from San Marcos, Texas, averaging over 10 points a game, has not seen action. So that could be part of the responsibility of others to step up, and they just haven't been able to do so quite yet. Coach Austin Falke in his first season as head coach, trying to sneak his team into that postseason tournament. Both he and Coach Smith, former colleagues, saying they love playing against each other, but just not with this much on the line. They could certainly do without all the pressure, but they don't get to choose their spots. The situations do. And what it finds us with is Trinity needing to win to lock up that bye, TLU needing to win to get into the tournament. You mentioned Green. I just looked down on the bench as they were as they were heading back to the bench, and I did not see a 22 jersey down in that huddle, so I don't even think that Green dressed today. Jenkins all over a Roscoe. That could have been a backcourt or a 10-second violation. Luckily for TLU, neither was called. Nearly give it up anyway. Williams trying to avoid the foul, then fights for the board and gets it to Milhouse as Cesar Reyes couldn't finish at the bucket. Jenkins now going in the trees and putting it over the taller defenders. Now takes it right back away from TLU. Caleb Jenkins is everywhere. Levine from deep off the back iron. You could feel the gym ready to explode if he had hit that one. Turning down a 6-0 run here in the last minute or so. Orozco will try it from deep. That has been his spot. Isaac Orozco has hit three from three. Jenkins making noise after that finish, wanting some sort of foul called, but it won't matter. Caleb Jenkins looks like he answered the call. Coach Jimmy Smith saying he is always on the precipice of breaking out. You never know when it'll come. And now with 11 points, the first Tiger in double digits. It's like he knew we would highlight his mom, Miss Evie Freiberg. Has to be loving this performance. Jenkins now defensively forces the last second shot and a bailout as Jamori Francis will shoot two more. He's gonna earn some frequent flyer miles to the free throw line, Will Francis. Call number 25, Ty Williams, 
is third and foul two. The line for two. He's going to be his fifth and sixth free throws of the day, respectively. So far, two for four. Make that two for five. Just two and a half points per game for the freshman. Rolls home that second free throw. But the lead still well up there for Trinity, 21 as we cross the halfway point of this second half. Williams swinging it around to Levine Roberts posting up on Francis. Roberts now double teamed looking for help, has Jenkins top of the key. Takes it himself, can't get it. Board cleared out by Wallace. Francis backs up on Williams, goes over the top, and it does rattle in for him. Good physical play down low for the freshman. CLU needing a massive run in these final nine minutes. Levine utilizing a couple of screens, finds Williams in the paint. And boy, that mid-range jump shot looking good today for Ty Williams. Yeah. It's just incredible. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he's looked great all day. And TLU here, they're four for their last five. And add another one to that. Five of their last six with an and one on the way. Cesar Reyes will try to complete the three-point play. Sophomore from Sabinal, Texas, drains that one. Williams trying to earn his position, will back up the defender and count it for Ty Williams. Have a night. Williams gonna get his 10th, hoping to tie Jenkins at the top of the Trinity scoreboard for 11. And Williams doing this all with four personal fouls to his name. Just an incredible showing for Williams, who is now in double digits alongside Jenkins, leading the Tigers with 11 points. Williams mentioned didn't play at all last year. Well, this year, he only played and scored in two of his first 10 games. He has now scored in 10 in a row that he has appeared in. So quite the improvement for number 25, and right here, Showing no hesitation over the bigger defender, Dunn. Foul number 34, Abdullah Roberts, his first. Team foul number four. Abdullah Roberts was the one who picked up that foul. That's going to be his first. Bounce pass to Reyes. He'll pull up from just beyond the free throw line, left of the rim. Abdullah Roberts takes it right to Watson. And two more free throws coming up for Abdullah Roberts as these Trinity Tigers living up to their reputation. They haven't always hit their free throws. That has been something they really want to work on. But they certainly get their fair share of attempts. Last year, they were in the top five in the nation in free throws attempts and free throws made. And this year, right back at the top, sixth and fifth, respectively when it comes to shooting and making free throws. Roberts hits both of his, and it's that type of thing that in tight games as postseason play appears, free throws just so, so critical. Yeah, and when you're a team like the Tigers, who already have a great offense, getting some extra points in there, a little help from the other team, never hurts. The important thing about free throws, as you mentioned, it is help from the other team. That is the other team that is making a mental mistake and that is allowing you to shoot, as the name suggests, free throws. So 
any time that you go to the line, it is incredibly important that you make those. Making them from the line and from the three-point line, there is Jacob Milhouse knocks down a three. And as if this 26-point lead isn't enough, Jimmy Smith getting ready to send his starters back out. A deep three from King splashes down. Trinity's gone three for three on their last three shots, so here's hoping that they can make it four for four. Count it, 4-3, Griffin Levine lets us know how many he made with his fingers. Seventy-two points with seven minutes to go for this Trinity offense. Will be called for a foul here, but they average 77 a game. That already leads the SCAC, and they are on pace to blow by that mark tonight. Yeah, very impressive offensively tonight. They're in the bonus, so every foul that TLU gives them, they're going to go up to the charity stripe. And they had a great showing against Austin College, 98 points. And they're showing off tonight again. At this break, Trinity 72, Texas Lutheran 46. And we'll stick around because we've made a lot of this rivalry, right? TLU plays Trinity a whole lot. I've been fortunate to be at the center of this rivalry my whole life with my brother playing baseball at TLU. And I don't think we've ever discussed, however, the mascot for TLU, Bulldogs, doesn't draw a lot of question marks, does it? I mean, we hear Bulldogs all the time. But in this game, 26 point lead, do you think it's time to pull out the Bulldog story? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out for the Bulldogs. Well, in the 1920s, their coach wanted tenacious and fierce competitors on the athletic side. And so it was as simple as saying, when I think of tenacious and fierce, I think of a Bulldog. Named his team the Bulldogs, helped the football team win a few games, and then female athletes at the time had been known as the Amazons and then the Bullets. But just a few years later, the whole school said, might as well take this Bulldog nickname and really carry it on. And here we find ourselves in 2023, the Texas Lutheran University Bulldogs. Hmm. Sometimes there's not much to a name, <laughs> but there's always an origin for the mascots and love finding out why teams choose their monikers. You mentioned before the break, um, Trinity being on pace to go over their season averages. They've already gone over their season averages uh, for steals. Or no, sorry, uh, they are at their season average uh, for steals. Uh, 10 steals so far today to go along with 21 forced turnovers against TLU. And where they've really made hay so far has been the paint. Something that we knew was going to be a key as a foul going to be called on Jacob Harvey here. One of the bigger bright spots for Texas Luther in their three-point defense, holding opponents to just 28% from distance. But we talked about it in the first half, if you were listening with us. What that does is it opens up the paint. Since they don't rotate over to help and will not leave men open behind the three-point line, as long as you can finish one-on-one, -on -one, you will be able to get points, and that's what the Tigers have done. 36 points in the paint. Allen responds with a jump shot himself, but with under six minutes to go, the lead still very comfortably in the hands of the Tigers with their starters on the floor. Braxton Berry battles for the board on his own miss. Will he go back up with it? He's trying. Bulldogs want a travel. Barry still with it. Harvey calling for it in the corner. Brown doesn't see him, but he does see Clark. His little floater is a little short. And a lot of chaos on that possession ends up in a foul called on number 11, King. Yeah, and Braxton Barry giving the team a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. If it weren't for him, we're not at the charity stripe right now. You mentioned second chances. Trinity only has five second chance points so far this game. It is still more than TLU's two, but kind of a little bit low considering how much they've been fighting down low so far. Ben Hanley will take a seat. Could be the final time we see him. 
on the stash sheet Friday evening. A.J. Clark still in there, gets his first free throw to go. The mustaches really seem to bring good luck. This senior class, which includes Hanley and Clark, undefeated on Stashy Friday. So it begs the question, should they just have mustaches all the time? Why not? I don't think so, because then that would ruin the magic of the mustache. It would dilute the... Uh, Maybe they should grow the mustache out during the playoffs. Like NHL players, they got the hockey beards for playoffs. Oh, yeah. Hmm, some controversy brewing here on Tiger Network. Differing opinions on the mustaches. We'll have to check in. I do know that at the half, ran into A.J. Clark's father. And he was with some folks who said they think the parents of the players should also grow mustaches. And Joe Clark did not grow one. So some people were disappointed by that. Do we think the parents should grow mustaches? Hmm. Only for the big games. They shouldn't have to do it every mustache Friday, but every mustache Friday that is a big game. You know, you have the rally cap in baseball, maybe you have the rally mustache in basketball. Of course. Although it is kind of hard to grow a mustache on the spot like it is to put on a cap on the spot. So it might be a little bit more difficult there. Offensive foul going to be called on Grayson Her, who can't help but smile as he's helped up by Pierce Matthews. We've got some new names we have not called so far today. Grayson Her among them. He's joined by Zach Fenn and Pierce Matthews, as well as Kevin Garcia and Grant Jacobs. Taking a look at one of the last points made for Trinity, Zach Fenn finishing at the bu bucket. Has some mop-up duty fulfilled here on the Trinity Maroon letters. Once again, thank you to everyone who helps game day happen. So many more game days to come. Tomorrow, Trinity, men and women hosting Southwestern as Fornerette from deep. Why not? Won't go, but the board stays with TLU. So the Pirates will sail into town to face Trinity. Over on the baseball diamond, Harden Simmons riding in on their horses. The Cowboys playing a doubleheader and then a game on Sunday. Just a little bit of the taste of so many great things happening at Trinity University. Garcia stuffed, goes back a second time, tries a third, battling, look at the effort, diving all over the floor and forcing the jump ball that will keep Trinity with the ball. So despite being up 30, despite there only being four minutes to go, every ball is being battled for on that floor. Yeah, and that's what you want to see in a team that no matter how far in the lead you are, no matter what point in the game you're in, this team is going to fight for every point, every bucket, and they are not going to give up. They're not going to take their foot off the gas. Exactly, because if you do relax, if you do take your foot off the gas, then that will likely allow the TOU to get back in it. So even though the lead is 30 right now, and there are only, I'm gonna say four minutes left, just, or, or just for clarity, even though you've got this big lead with this big time remaining, you don't want to step off the gas because you don't want to give the other team a chance. But also on top of that, these players that are coming in right now, these freshmen, these sophomores, you want to get them accustomed to playing at maximum pace so that they can be ready to contribute as juniors and seniors whenever it's their time to be a starter. Coach Falky said this is a very fun league. Loves being one of very good coaches that he says he's lucky to be among the group of. And among those with Trinity connections, the Trinity connections don't end here. Really the Jimmy Smith connections, if we're being honest. He has his hand in just about every SCAC school you can imagine. And one of his former assistants, Coach Kirkendall of Southwestern, hanging on to a three-point lead over in Kerrville. Four minutes to go against Shriner. That would be a big result for the Pirates and would make that game still very important even if they lose, but it would elevate it to a whole new level for Southwestern and TLU, no matter the result here, can still make the tournament if they go up to Shriner and defeat them. Meanwhile, a very interesting result in Colorado Springs, Reed. What's the update there from the Rocky Mountains? Well, 
Top ranked St. Thomas is down by five in the first half, 25 to 30. Colorado College, very difficult to play at home. You can say that again. You can ask the men's and women's teams here at Trinity just how hard it is to go into, into altitude. They have a sign up there at Reed Arena. It says, welcome to 6,000 feet. It is not easy to win there. And the black and gold Tigers, not the Tigers you usually see on Tiger Network, were the ones who came on top. That would be a huge win over an undefeated SCAC team in St. Thomas. Yeah, and St. Thomas, not only undefeated in the SCAC, nationally ranked, it would shake up the SCAC. And they are definitely the team that everyone wants to beat in the conference tournament. They've already locked up the one seed there. It'll be so fascinating to see it unfold. As you see it on your screen, St. Thomas has not lost in conference play, only two losses all year. They're the team to beat. But if you're Trinity, you have to be feeling good about hosting that tournament. The Tigers 9-1 and one inside Calgar Gym. The one loss to St. Thomas. So the Celts have come in here before and beaten the Tigers. But you can just imagine a week from now, the tournament taking place. Hopefully we get stands filled with fans. Lots of fans tuning in on Tiger Network, of course. But we encourage all of you to come down if you have the opportunity. So much fun to watch these teams live. Way off on the three there is Reyes TLU. Still fighting hard here in the final 235. But it has just not been their night. Looking like it's going to be seven losses in a row for a TLU team that started the season very hot, was in the top half of the SEAC, and now they're going to be fighting for their lives tomorrow night in Kerrville. Of course, and I mean, with a win and you're in or lose and go home, you know, that is, that is one of the most exciting situations that you can have just from an outsider standpoint whenever it comes to sports. It all comes down to one game. Whoever wins gets to move on. Whoever doesn't, that's it. That's the end. Matthews will try the three. Short on that one. You mentioned earlier the, uh, the, the, uh, the home court advantage for Colorado. And I'm wondering, obviously the altitude is going to have an effect, not just on the player's lungs being able to breathe, but I wonder also, that could also have an impact on the way that the ball travels through the air as well. The thinner air maybe has more shots go wide, maybe it makes it a more difficult court to shoot at compared to the lower altitude games played in Louisiana, San Antonio, Houston, things like that. Absolutely. As we saw Zach Austin newly into the game with an excellent block. Gets it down to Cole Anderson here. Can he get his first points of the year? He certainly can. Cole Anderson has not scored this year, has not scored last year. That is the first bucket of his career. The sophomore from Mont Bellevue, Texas. So you always are looking for big moments on Tiger Network. As we get a good look at that replay, Anderson, the up and under. But to answer your point, Caleb, in volleyball, that is certainly a concern that coaches have. They say their serves tend to fly out a little bit more, so teams have to get used to what it's like to serve in that gym. And if anybody figured it out, it was TLU who won the SCAC Volleyball Championship in Reed Arena against Colorado College. They're going to be looking for some more magic next week to bring home more SCAC crowns. Grayson Herr can't connect from the lane. And there's just under a minute left to go in San Antonio. It is looking like all roads to March will go through San Antonio. A dominating performance from start to finish for these Trinity Tigers. Caleb Jenkins, 11 points. AJ Clark, 10. Ty Williams up there with 11 as well. Grant Jacobs turning the corner here will be fouled. But you just look up and down this roster at the people who have contributed. A very welcome sign for Jimmy Smith who has won with Shriner. He has won with TLU. Looking to win a SCAC 
championship for the first time with the Trinity Tigers. It's going to be really difficult to, uh, to I guess, dethrone St. Thomas, but if any team can do it, I'm sure the Trinity can. Grant Jacobs, unicorn in the house, New Braunfels High School, too strong on that free throw. Final couple possessions coming up, and that errant pass will give it to Trinity, 27.9 to go. And the lead, 27, Trinity and Coach Smith have said all year long, sometimes what you need is a good blowout to feel it clicking, get everyone feeling confident. And I think this win, 27 points, certainly qualifies as that. The Trinity Tigers sending the black and gold home cold. Standing ovation on the way, and the buzzer will sound as that's another Trinity Tigers victory. Make it 2-0 against TLU. Yeah, and this was a very impressive defensive performance. 58 points the Bulldogs were held to. This is the best performance from the defense since January 14th, where they went to Georgetown and stymied the Southwestern offense to only 50 points. And also countering that, this is one of, I believe, the worst uh, showings by TLU, I believe, this season. Uh, the only lower score that they had was whenever they lost at Centenary, 72-51. So second worst uh, showing by TLU this season. A bit to work on before they head into their game tomorrow. That's the key, though. So much good basketball on this Friday night, and we are rewarded with more good basketball on Saturday. It'll be a doubleheader, and how we wish we could stream in live from Kerrville. There are 24 seconds left. Shriner and Southwestern are tied at 64. That'll be a photo finish for sure, and then the Pirates will come into town tomorrow night to try to keep their tournament hopes alive. It has been a pleasure to be with you this evening. Trinity pulling off the win against the women of TLU and the men. The Bulldogs now trying to go to Kerrville to keep their season going, and we'll see what the Pirates have on tap tomorrow night. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone in the control room, the SIDs, the mop crew, everybody that makes these games happen at Calgar Gym. For Caleb Reed and Reed Rosales, I'm Brian Jenselson. Have a fantastic Friday night. I'm San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I am a Trinity University alum, and I want you to know about my passion for these two vibrant communities. My alma mater is now a nationally recognized liberal arts university, offering fully integrated arts, humanities, STEM, and professional programs. Grounded in the liberal arts, Trinity graduates students who think critically, act meaningfully, and contribute confidently throughout their careers. As for San Antonio, Trinity is an oasis in the heart of a city that serves as a cultural bridge to the Americas. 
We are a diverse community that values inclusion and welcomes intellectual curiosity and spirited debate. We're a city that challenges convention and welcomes new ideas. Great things are happening at Trinity University in San Antonio and through all our connections to our multicultural world. Join me in being part of this exciting moment.